Welcome to the Swine Web News Report on Swine TV. I am your host, Fiorella. Now let's get right to the busy headlines. Pork producer Peter Schneider responds via Twitter to Swine Web article. Hawk welfare laws cover nine states and 3% of the national herd in 2022. Quoting his tweet, he says, State law regulating their own animal welfare standards are not the concern. It's the law that regulates pork eating in their states that is. Federal code to prevent states from one open prevents this. And now, let's get to the latest swine news headlines. Meet Prism 10, the newly developed, modern, web-based software for boar stoat management. This new software perfectly integrates all ejaculate data and connects all production and management processes from semen collection to reporting production statistics. It stands out through its dynamic, intuitive user interface and flexible architecture. Comprehensive reporting with customizable templates and the production dashboard provides extensive management control options. To stay ahead on porcin circovirus associated disease management, Bettinger Ingelheim has launched the swine industry's first porcin circovirus type 2D based baculovirus vector vaccine called Defense. The new vaccine demonstrates efficacy and robustness under severe PCVAD conditions. Their study also reveals that pigs vaccinated with defense required fewer treatments in the acute phase of the disease. Pork Quality Assurance Plus, also known as PQA Plus, is an educational tool that assists pork producers and their employees by evaluating their production practices, providing a method for continuous improvement through a certification program sanctioned by the National Pork Board. PQA Plus version 4 certifications will expire at the end of August 2022. Michigan State University Extension is preparing trainings for version 5, which will roll out in June at the 2022 World Pork Expo. Currently, state trainers across the U.S. are completing the training and offering up training to advisors. Dr. Scott D. from Pipestone reminds us about the importance of biosecurity on swine farms. Hi, Scott D. here talking with uh, Jim Eady on the Swine Whip, uh, talking a little bit about swine farm biosecurity, which some of you may know has been the focus of my career in the last 35 years, studying transmission of viruses and how we intervene to reduce the risk of spread from farm to farm and country to country. Uh, I think it's the future for locking in good production and protecting health just to have a good biosecurity plan. And I'll tease everyone by talking about this comes in multiple levels. First, it's mechanical, obviously trucks, people, supplies. Number two is air, filtration. Number three is feed. So pay attention. In the future, we're going to go through that whole story from where it began, where it is now, and where is the future when it comes to pig farm biosecurity. See you soon. We all know construction is at a halt, but remodeling is happening. Our team spoke with Fritz Richards at Hot Slack with a maintenance update, among other things. As we head into the 2022 construction season, escalating material prices and supply chain issues have made the new construction somewhat cost prohibitive. The cost for a finishing house in North Carolina has risen over $100 per head since 2020. If we take a historical view of cost, the price has doubled since 2005, increasing from an average of $140 a head to today's price coming in at $295 a head. Producer interest is primarily centered on retrofitting existing breeding and gestation facilities into loose housing system to supply packer demand. The typical farm will lose about 25-33% to of cell capacity making this transition. This includes operation with existing loose housing facilities increasing to 24 square feet per animal and changing breeding stalls to free access stalls. Also, a quick reminder to everyone to check their building insurance. The sharp increase in building costs probably means that your coverage has not kept pace. 
Working with your agent to increase coverage in the face of rising replacement costs ensures you're protecting your investment. Cell mortality. Why is this important? Jim Long, President and CEO from Genesis Genetics, explains. One of the biggest challenges I see today in the, our industry is the huge increase in cell mortality. Five, six years ago, we were 7 to 8% of cell mortality, and the latest information shows approaching 14 to 15%. One of the things with that is, is we got to keep in mind, if it's 14 to 50% average, that means half the people are above that. We see producers hitting 20%. Part of the challenge is, which is creating this in our opinion, is the significant significant increase in prolapses some genetic companies are having, which basically destroys the cell. Second part is, is the structural of the animals. SMS Meta Farms uh, have calculated that a dead cell is worth between about $900 to $1,150. Let's use $1,000 value per dead cell, and the economic loss is huge. Plus, as we move, if this keeps increasing, uh, are we going to have animal welfare issues? Hopefully not. The thing is, is every producer's got to look at where they are and if there's solutions to it. It's a, it's a big economic factor to our industry today. In March, the Canadian Pork Council and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency hosted the African Soin Fever Compartments webinar on the draft national standards and framework. Dr. Egan Brokoff summarizes the webinar. For the past two years, we have been working extensively on an ASF-free compartments program. ASF has never been found in Canada, but it continues to spread internationally and poses a significant risk to the Canadian pork industry and the Canadian economy. The CFIA has recently supported the development of the World Organization for Animal Health guidelines for ASF compartmentalization as it, and is in the process of supporting industry with the development of an ASF national compartmentalization program for swine in anticipation of ASF being discovered in Canada. The consultation opens March 18th and stakeholders have until June 16th to submit feedback. You can find the link to register at the Canadian Pork Council's website if you follow the African Swine Fever link and then look for the compartments webinar. I'm looking forward to seeing you then. There is a rare bacteria found in pigs in Iowa. Our own Jim Eady speaks with Daryl Holtkamp from Iowa State University about this. Welcome to the Swine TV report through Swine Web. Iowa State University veterinarians investigating an unusual bacteria disease in central Iowa pigs. We reported on this today on Swine Web. We have uh, Daryl Holtkamp from Iowa State joining us. Welcome, Daryl. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be here. What's going on here? Yeah, so we've had an outbreak of uh, actinal bacillus pleuronemoniae, APP for short. Uh, that's a bacteria that's been around for a very long time, but we've generally, uh, as an industry, figured out how to control it. So we don't typically have problems with APP uh, so much anymore. Uh, however, in this case, uh, we had a recent outbreak in, in north central Iowa, uh, and it, and it uh, interestingly is in a very small geographic area. So uh, a roughly 20 to 25 square uh, uh, mile radius uh, around an area. And so that makes it interesting from an epidemiological standpoint. Uh, clinically, what, what we're seeing in groups of pigs that are affected uh, is that they um, uh, exhibit resp respiratory signs, uh, you see uh, uh, you know, uh, difficulty breathing, uh, some redness, and then very quickly that progresses to death. And, and so, uh, oftentimes what they report is that they, you know, 
within within six to uh, 24 hours of, of seeing first clinical signs, they've got a, a lot of pigs that are, are uh, starting to die. And, and so for clinically, it's uh, devastating because it's affecting uh, primarily older pigs. So the uh, pigs that are close to marketing age. And so not only uh, do producers lose the revenue, but they've got uh, all that expensive feed in them at that point as well. And so economically, it's a, a very devastating. Um, so we've been uh, doing some investigations to, to try to look at, uh, again, what's going on here. So why now and what's new about this bacteria? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And uh, uh, Dr. Marcelo Amita and others at Iowa State University with some funding from the Swine Health Information Center uh, are doing some sequencing, uh, you know, running, uh, looking at different serotypes. And, and this serotype, uh, this bacteria in particular, seems to be a serotype 15 that's causing the problems. Uh, again, serotype 15 has been around for a while, but uh, there's something unique about uh, uh, this particular uh, bacteria. And uh, we uh, are trying to sort that out. It, it appears that there could be some uh, different toxins being produced by this uh, bacteria that, uh, that previous serotype 15s uh, didn't produce. And so uh, investigations are going on uh, as we speak to try to sort that out. So how is it being transmitted? Well, again, that's uh, something we're working on at the moment here. We've done uh, several investigations. Uh, we've already done about seven uh, uh, of those and, and looking to do a couple more. Um, so far, uh, what we're learning is that uh, a common uh, element that's involved here is rendering. Uh, several of the groups, though, were also in the marketing phase. And so they uh, uh, have mark, uh, trucks going back and forth to the packing plant that certainly be involved. Uh, caretakers and other people moving back and forth, uh, certainly something that, that's common. Uh, to most, if not all, of these cases, and uh, uh, some uh, other things that uh, a little bit more unusual would be some loadout crews, vaccine crews. Not all of the cases we've investigated uh, have that or use those, but some of, some have used those, and, and very well uh, that very well could be involved in how it's being transmitted from one group of pigs to another as well. Thanks for jumping on and giving us an update, Daryl. Glad to do that, Jim. As you probably know, Dr. Scott D. was recognized with the 2022 Pork Industry Distinguished Service Award. You won't want to miss this podcast catching up on things, finishing with a summary of each decade with a key point that stands out in our industry from the 1980s to the present day. Visit SwineWeb.com and search Scott D. or visit the SwineWeb.com podcast page. Thank you for watching the SwineWeb newscast on Swine TV. Make sure you visit us at swingtv.com or swingweb.com for everything in the pork industry. I am your host, Pirella. See you next time.